Hello, welcome to Phaser Tech. So today I'll be taking a look at Alme Backupper and showing how to use a few of its features. This is backup software available for Windows, and it comes in a few different versions including a free one that's geared towards home users that are looking for simple but effective backup software to keep their data safe. The link to download it is in the video description below, so I encourage you to give it a try if you're currently looking for backup software. Now there's lots of competition for backup software on Windows, but Alme is one of the more popular choices, so let's give it a try to see how well it actually works. I'll be testing two features today. First I'll be doing a folder backup onto a network attached storage, and then I'll be showing how to clone a system drive onto a new SSD. I'll be doing the cloning on the $60 laptop that I've made a few videos about already. So if you'd like to see those, I'll leave a link up in the corner. Alright, let's get on with the review. I recommend downloading the software from the link in the video description below, and it'll take you to this page here. Simply hit download and install it. You'll be presented with a screen to purchase or try the pro version, or click skip to install the free version. Once it's done, go ahead and run it. So my first impressions of the software are good. The color theme is pleasing to look at and the interface is simple to navigate. The main features are clearly labeled on the side. The home tab gives shortcuts to your backup and sync jobs. The other features we can see are backup, sync, restore, clone, and tools. Clicking on them expands the available options. So first I'm going to show how to set up a scheduled folder backup that will be saved to one of my network drives. For this task, I'm going to switch to my desktop and do a backup of all my music production projects. If you're a content creator like me, then I'm sure you understand how important it is to keep backups in case you mess up a project or accidentally delete something. Also, setting up an automatic scheduled backup makes everything worry-free. So to do this, first go to Backup and then click File Backup. Next, click Add Folder or Add File and a browser window will open where you can select what you want to back up. I'll be selecting my Reaper Media folder where my DAW projects are located. Next, select the destination by clicking the drop-down menu here. Then you'll be given the choice of a local path, a network attached storage device, or a cloud drive. In my case, I'll be saving it to a Samba shared drive. So I'll enter the computer's IP address here and the drive's path. Click the blue arrow and select the folder to confirm. Now let's go to the options and configure it. The default options are fine here. If you need encryption you'll want to upgrade to the pro version. You can also adjust the compression settings here. And since I have a fast system I'll leave it on high. Now let's look at the schedule settings. Here you can set up specific times when you want to create the backups. I'm going to set up a daily backup. Now go to Backup Scheme to choose what sort of backup you want to do. Incremental backups are more efficient in terms of storage if you plan to do scheduled backups. So I'm going to select this one. I'm also going to select Automatic Backup Cleanups, which will automatically delete old backups that are no longer necessary. Keep in mind this is a useful feature that's only available in the Pro version. These settings look good so let's click OK. I recommend giving the task a name so it's easier to manage in the future in case you have multiple tasks. Now we're ready to start the backup. This might take a while depending on the size of your folder. Now that the backup is done, I'm going to test it to see if I can properly restore. I've deleted the files from my local drive so now I'll be restoring them from the network drive I used as the backup destination. This is quite easy to do. First just click restore and then select the job you want. If you've made different backups then they'll all appear here. Click next and you'll be given an opportunity to explore the backup. If you set up a scheduled backup then you can select the specific date that you want to restore from. The Explorer allows you to select certain folders or files from the backup as well. But in this case I want to restore the entire folder. 
Now you'll be given the chance to restore the folder to the destination of your choice. I'll select its original location and now start it. Now that it's done, let's see if it actually backed up all the data. I'll check the size of the folder to verify. And it looks good. It's over 10 gigs which is the correct size. You can also go to Tools and click Explore Image if you just want to view the files and folders without starting a restore. Now let's try out the cloning and imaging features on a laptop. I'll be cloning from the laptop's built-in 64 gig storage and the destination will be the 256 gig SSD I've just installed. First click Clone on the left hand side. You'll be presented with a few options. System clone and disk clone are essentially the same thing. But system clone automatically selects the current boot disk as source, so it's slightly easier. I'll be selecting disk clone because this is also included in the free version. Now select the source drive which in my case is the 64 gig flash drive. And then select the destination drive. Be careful to select the correct destination because if you select the wrong one, it will be erased. Now on this screen notice the setting on the bottom called SSD alignment. You'll want to select this if you're cloning to an SSD. If your target disk is larger than the source, you'll want to also go to edit partitions and select add unused space to all partitions in order to use that extra space. Unfortunately this feature is only available in the pro version. So if you're using the free version then your clone drive will be the same size as the original drive unless you go through the extra steps of manually resizing it. I think this is a feature that could have been included in the free version. But anyway, let's continue and finish the cloning process. If you see this message, go ahead and press yes. It'll take a while to complete, but when it does, go ahead and restart the system and enter the BIOS. Normally you can get into the BIOS by tapping the delete key on the boot screen but it might vary depending on the motherboard. Once you're in the BIOS, navigate to the boot section and change the first boot option. You should see two Windows boot manager entries. So select the one that corresponds to the new drive. The menus and options might look slightly different depending on your motherboard, but they should be similar enough you can figure it out. Now save and restart, and when your system boots up it should be running from the new drive. Well that's all for today. Overall I found Alme Backupper to be very effective and simple to use, and I'd recommend it both for casual home users, and also businesses and professionals who could use the advanced syncing and backup options. Hopefully this review was helpful for those thinking about trying it or wanted to learn how to use it. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to help my channel grow. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.